Hey, what's up? So I'll catch you up. I'm pretty much done with the Akira bar scene, but I figured that today I wanted to kind of talk through how I do the lighting for that scene. It'll be a bit of a insight in how I do lighting for my other Akira scenes and also just an opportunity for me to show you some like techniques and tricks and things like that that I use in my in my scenes. By the way, if you follow me on socials, like I started playing around with Blender 4.2 Alpha is the one that's supposed to have the new version of Eevee. And the biggest thing that I noticed is that, for example, if we pop into Eevee here for in Blender 4.0, it's still really, really smooth. It still looks really, really good, but the, the shadows are mainly the things that are constantly recalculating. But with 4.2, the shadows almost seem fixed. Like they seem like they're baked in. And instead of the recalculating that it's doing, it feels a little bit like denoising. So that like, if you look in the dark areas, you can kind of notice a bit of like soft denoising effects going on. So to me, it feels like really good and highly optimized cycles with denoising turned on mixed with EV. And actually I've noticed that when I play like Cyberpunk, for example, when I play that game and everything is reflective, you can see like the lights or the fog. It's like screen space. So like if you move your camera, it quickly like looks distorted and then it resolves itself. And then you move your camera again, it looks weird and noisy and that resolves itself. So that's happening in that game. So I'm assuming that's kind of like the same tech that's happening in, um, in 4.2. Uh, but I'm not sure, you know, maybe somebody who knows more about this stuff knows more than me. Anyway, what we're going to talk about here is the lighting. So... We have just the emissive surfaces, which are these, um, these like signs and stuff. And then up here, there's a lamp and that's it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a big area light. And most of my scenes, all of the past Akira scenes, I've like mostly used area lights, like for the cities, for the exteriors. They're like these, if you look at the files, they're like really, really giant area lights that are like the width of the building. And then the power is like a million or something like that, a million Watts. But for this one, we don't need anything too crazy. So I'm, I'm gonna, I want to say this lighting with Eevee, it's like lighting for a video game. And if you've never had experience lighting for a video game, basically in a video game, everything that's a light has like an, has a light object, which is like a sign or whatever, or a light bulb. And then it'll have an actual light, like in-game, in-engine light, kind of like this. It'll look like this. Like it won't be visible in a render. It won't be visible, but there's a light object and then there's a light, whatever, like an actual lamp in the game engine that emits the light on the surfaces and stuff like that. Because actual emissive surfaces don't cast light on anything. They're just like visually bright, but they don't actually cast real light on anything, like not in the scene. So it seems like with ray tracing on 4.2 in EV Next, it does do that. So maybe that's kind of like the upgrade. Um, and maybe I won't have to do that, but I still like doing this way, especially with Eevee. With Cycles, you don't have to do this, but with Eevee, you have to do this because the, as you can see, like if I hide this, the light coming off of this is not being cast anywhere on the scene, but with the area light, it is. So this is just kind of how I do my lighting with Eevee specifically. So first thing, I'm going to add the area light. I'm going to do a little top view and just align it kind of with this scale it down just to get it close to that size and then here it looks good I'm, I'm i'm never for sure if you can do this with cycles or not but what with eevee what i like doing is for example if you go down to the light settings here there is sh contact shadows which is not by default turned on and if i turn that on it just adds like you can see contact shadows to like the poster and things like that Sometimes I have it on, sometimes I don't. For a scene like this, I think it's going to be worth having it on because there's a lot more smaller details that need to catch the light. Okay, so one light there. I think that's already lighting up like most of the scene. I also want to light down in the bottom. So I'm just going to shift D, duplicate this, bring it down, and then bring it all the way over. Just going to tuck it right in the corner here so that you can see it on the door. Okay, that looks good. And then... I had an area light back here, shifty duplicated and kind of had it back here just to make it look like, you know, there's more activity up here. There's more stuff up here. Once I tell you this, you'll, you'll start noticing it in my work if you don't notice it already, but I like to layer dark and light, dark and light constantly. So the edge of a, like you see how it's light here and then it gets dark and then it gets light again. So that kind of edge creation through light and dark values, I don't know what you would call like stacking of that stuff, what makes environments feel more 3d because it's like 
there's light on the object in the foreground and then it gets dark so that means it kind of go has depth and then it gets light behind it so you know there's something behind that and it's kind of like this compositional trick that plays with showing you the end of something while showing you there's also something beyond that and then i'm gonna put a uh, a point light so this is just one of these like sphere lights so you could put one on either side but i'm gonna probably just have one on the uh, kind of outside like this and so with the point light what's cool is that and i and i do this mostly with the point light less so with the area light but with the point light you see how it kind of casts this glow everywhere and one thing i like about doing it with eevee is the custom distance so i'm gonna start bringing this down and you'll see that the spread of the light starts to get a little bit more constricted see so now it feels a little bit like a video game with the way that the lighting works so you kind of have these like very localized areas of light so i kind of want this thing to be emitting light but not uh like an uh, like not too far out so i'm gonna set that to maybe like 1.5 is good now that it's there to like localize i'm gonna duplicate it and bring it up here and just kind of leave it here as well just like tuck it in this corner and uh and then i want to put one more area light kind of on the outside so there's good lighting on the inside there's a fair amount maybe i might make this a little bit brighter one thing that's happening is like it's really that light is really coming out onto the uh onto the sidewalk here and i don't exactly want that i kind of want it to look like a little tucked in space and i don't want it to look like the light is really bleeding out too much so i'm going to bring down the distance just like i did with the point light Let's, let's start with something really low, like one. Okay, cool. So then we can just grow, grow from there. And you can see now that how much, like how how little I need really in this scene is 2.8 meters. So if you can you you can now know that like wow, it was 40 both before. It really didn't need to be 40. It could have been 20, and it would have looked exactly the same. But see, what I want is I don't want the light coming all the way onto the sidewalk. So I'm just looking for that right balance where it's like it's in this space, but it's not coming out onto the sidewalk too much. Maybe like four like an even number seems good okay cool so the last one i'm going to do is i'm going to put like a bit of an area like an ambient light outside and right now the environment color is just blue it's set to a strength of one so it's really really subtle like you can kind of see it here it's really dark it's just an, like almost like an ambient blue like a nighttime blue but i do want to have an another stronger blue light outside so i'm going to duplicate this and then i'm going to kind of angle it um towards the opening like that and then i'm just gonna scale it out so it's a little bit wider bring it in and i want it to be on the left side so i'm gonna put it over here and then i'm gonna make it like a like a cold blue color something like that and really what i want is i want to cast it more on the ground and a little bit like on the side okay and then i'll duplicate it to the other side so I'm just kind of experimenting, just like, this is a subtle effect that I want to have. I don't want to have it taking up too much of your attention. I don't want you, like, looking over here, but I do want it to be, there to be a bit of a blue light here. I like that you can, like, it's kind of on the ground a little bit, and it's reflecting in the sidewalk. I think that looks good to me. Like, they add, like, a more of an environmental blue in contrast to the interior colors that are, like, a lot more warmer and white. All right. Just checking my angles, checking everything. Cool. So that's it. That's how I light my scenes. Hopefully some of these like little little tricks and stuff can help you in your scenes and light your scenes a little bit better. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll just, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.